Go live. Hi, everybody. You, if you watched my stream on Everybody Sucks the other day, we went over three phones that were total botched repairs. And one of them is still here on my desk. So I finally come back to the shop and I'm going to try and fix it. I'm also going to do this live and I'm going to try to not touch my face the entire time because Christy was just here and I just read an article about how in a restaurant in China there was a table that infected two other tables that were actually 10 feet away uh, and that that and they they just through aerosolized droplets in the air. So I kind of want to restate to everybody that six feet apart is not a guarantee. That's a minimum. And having read that article, it kind of made me realize that rooms have air currents that move around. I saw another paper where if you're standing in one spot in a room, you actually might be more susceptible to getting infected by a guy over there than if you were standing right next to him. So we're trying to be careful and I'm gonna try to see if I can stay safe during the stream, but I wanted to do this. So let's start with the note and uh, we'll, we'll talk to anybody that wants to hang out with us on chat. I see a couple hello Jessas, John, James, and his wife loves watching the video. So here we go. This is an iPhone 7 description. Phone did not back up before getting a new one and it had been in a drawer since November. So sticking a working phone in a drawer shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, so we went to look at the old phone and went to look at the old pictures. It would not turn on. So we left it on a charger for several days, nothing. So at that point, it sounds like a phone that died while it was in a drawer. That sounds un, you know, kind of unusual and I would sure like to be the first person to see that phone. So I don't, I wasn't the first person. The first person said, I'm gonna change the battery and change the TriStar chip and then said it didn't work. And then, uh, and then they, this is the rest of this uh, boilerplate. Now this is a typo, God damn it. You know how I feel about inattention to detail. So I'm going to have to beat someone over that missing S. All right. But I don't want you guys to think that we didn't notice that because we sure did. All right. So let's start by saying, let's look at this phone under the hand cam. This is the same one from the other day that I just was disgusted and left. And we've got the super capacity battery, you know, on, you know, in general, when you see something like that, that's an indicator of, of low quality, but who knows. And then we've got the logic board and the logic board just kind of looks like somebody's been here before, a little fluxy, a little abraded. Now let's go take a look under the microscope. Don't put your phone in your drawers, uh, says Bob. All right, how do we get to the microphone or how do we get to the, to the microscope? Here we go. All right, so let's look around up at the top. Heat, somebody's been here before with heat because the, uh, the, the adhesive is kind of melted a little bit and all the little stickers are melted. There we go. Um, out of sync with what I can see. Let's get that fixed. All right, so somebody stuck some heat around here. Let's look for other signs of pry damage or connector damage, looks okay. Let's look up here. Any kind of long through damage or water? Nope. Looks normal. Looking over here. Normal. Normal. Uh, green. What the heck is this? We got some dried toothpaste. That's a little bit weird. And somebody's been, you know, brushed it with a, you know, somebody's been working around here with a brush that was too big, like a giant, a giant uh back scratcher brush and then we can see what's going on here this is the tristar area and and look at this this is so not okay this is this is what's in the what not to do column this means 
You need to go to school or quit. You can't do this to somebody's phone when they come in and they say, I really want the pictures. Can you help me? You should say, no, I can't help you because I don't have the experience to be able to, to diagnose your phone and execute a repair. And we see this all the time. So what if you don't, don't know how to change TriStar, but you would sure like to? All right, well, you can come to the course, but until that's happening, you gotta practice. So my suggestion would be to get some iCloud locked boards, like, you know, here's one. I think we're gonna start selling these on store.ipadrehab.com just for this purpose. And then you take a working board, you take TriStar off, and you put TriStar back on and have it still be working. Until you can do that routinely, you don't touch this. That's my message. And I think we have a responsibility. If we don't want to see the manufacturers raining down these $2,000 stupid certifications that are going to corporate entities that have never fixed a phone in their life, you know, we have to start calling each other out. You know, we've got to start telling customers that is bad repair rather than all this like, you know, uh, pro, you know, industry courtesy, you know, like don't, don't say, no, you got to tell somebody when they got a bad deal. That's my opinion. So I don't know if this phone's going to be recoverable or not, but I do know that this is terrible. This is so crooked. Yeah. I mean, this is terrible, especially because what does this chip do? It's a chip that's a tiny brain. It processes data from the USB interface. It talks to the CPU. And if you stir data lines together, like undoubtedly underneath there, you can kill other chips and make something that was recoverable, completely unrecoverable. Plus, we don't have any idea if this phone ever needed this job at all. And that makes our job a lot more complicated. All right, so let's kind of take stock around here what else is going on all right over here it's just filthy but all all of this fluff is just kind of from that sticker I'm looking there's flux everywhere this is like there's wall-to-wall -wall flux like way all in here look at this this is all i mean this is at some quite a distance from whatever was going on there flux just everywhere just such a mess and we're trying to look to see, did they actually change any other chips? I think you could tell because they'd be on sideways. We're upside down. And none of these look like they've been actually put on sideways. Look at all this just water damage from the flux. Everything is just, you know, it's supposed to look shiny, shiny like these guys. But they've just left mountains of flux on there and then just didn't care. Cut. Now that's a physical cut. Cut this antenna. Disaster. Look at these two dudes bridged together. Not cool. This is, this is botched repair. Look at the chip. The chip, they took a bite out of it. They gnawed on it like a cracker. I know it's the pandemic and there's shortages at the grocery store, but you don't need to start resorting to eating the corners of your TriStar. It's just, it's just a mess. All right, so... All right, we're going to start by just saying, well, we can't do any, we can't even do diagnosis until we start cleaning up this mess and get this back to normal. So we're going to just start by taking, taking this TriStar back off. So let's get some hot air and take it off. And I have no idea whether or not this will be recoverable. And if it's not, then we're gonna round up a posse. We're gonna figure out who did this. We're gonna go rough him up. We're gonna go rough him up in the in the name of whose phone is this? Michaela. We're gonna go rough him up. Okay. Michaela is from Kentucky. So somebody in Kentucky needs to stop messing stuff up. All right. So let's take this off. We do not gnaw on our TriStar. Yeah, that's kind of like rule number zero. Let's see if we can kind of lift this up. Oh God, it's barely even on there. Okay, and let's take a look underneath that beautiful 
TriStar job. What do we have under Door of Doom? Whoa, somebody's washing a, a pair of galoshes. Whoa! I'm gonna bl blow this place up. All right, let's take a look and see what what's this nonsense. Look at this. Ah, look at this nightmare. We've, we have, they, I mean, it, I don't think that, I think they should kind of get some sort of like prize. I don't know that I could, if you challenged me, I don't know that I would be able to bridge together one, one, two, three rows with a fourth one and a fifth one. I don't think I could bridge together five pads plus rip off one. So this one here is ripped off and gone. And then we've got two that are missing down here, one of which might be okay, I think is maybe no stuff, but one I think you're gonna need. I, I mean, you'd be hard pressed to do that if you were doing a challenge. It looks like they ate the corner of this accessory chip these guys are bridged together, and this is a pretty big nightmare. Ah, uh, what a nightmare. So what, the first thing, I want to look up just for the fun of it and see what's the consequence. What are all these guys? What are, what are these guys in one, two, three, these little center guys, you know, to see if it even makes sense to, to carry on. So let me see if I, I haven't worked at this station in a long time, so let's see if this station still has the XW. Does it? Whoa. Let's see. Let me see if I can find some ZXW and get some ZXW working. All right. Without schematic, that would be pretty much unrepairable. Well, I mean, you could just kind of just say, I'm going to read the board and I'm going to undo what they did and see what happens, which is pretty much what, what our strategy is going to be. So let's see if we can get ZXW working and we can, let's see if we can show ZXW. Yeah. All right. Let's get rid of this and we'll all look at ZXW together. All right. So let's go find TriStar. Here we go. TriStar. And let's see what has this guy bridged together. He's bridged together. TriStar Bypass, which is a uh, three volt line. So that's three volts. And he's bridged that into this one, TriStar to Tigris VBus off. So this is a signal that is the output from TriStar to Tigris. And TriStar to the CPU, an interrupt from TriStar to the CPU has been bridged together as well. And then the thing that's missing is this guy. So TriStar to PMU host reset is missing. In general, resets are important, so that probably will have to be rebuilt. And then let's look down here and see what else is missing. This guy, which is UART accessory to AP, RXD. That one, I'm not sure. We Maybe we can get away with not having it. And then D1, that's the one that is doesn't go anywhere. So this one is, this one's going to be a little bit of a trouble for us. And if we, if we look back, it's actually a little bit worse. If we look back here, we can see that this pad is actually flipped over, right? So it's supposed to be a row here. This pad is, is sort of flipped over. Okay, so that's what we're going for. Let's see it, what we can do to just start cleaning this up. Some of this we're absolutely gonna have to repair in order to get a TriStar on here. But before that, I'm gonna see, I know that a phone, if I take a demo phone and I take TriStar off, at least the, I haven't done that for a while, but the last time I did that, it would show an Apple logo and then it would just sort of loop. So I kind of want to see if this, if we could kind of get it to that state. And if so, then it might make sense to continue and put TriStar back on. Okay, so let's just put 
some flux on here and use an iron to try and tame this a little bit and unbridge some of the things so that we're only left with some open lines. And I'm trying to do the opposite of braiding, which is trying to make skittles on these pads because if they're dull and gray like that they'll never they'll never take solder they won't make a joint so we're trying to kind of rejuvenate them So I'd like to see little shiny Skittles. All right, now let's try and see if we can nudge the ones that are um, like not in the right spot. Let's see if we can kind of get them to go home. Otherwise we have to rebuild them. So let's see if we can do that. All right, the real question is, was this his first try on a customer phone? You know, I'd really like to call him up. I don't know who it was, but I, I, I really think, you know, as we kind of see a certification being forced down our throats from the manufacturers and people that have just nothing to do with actually fixing devices, uh, the CTIA people, uh, and other people just trying to capitalize on this industry, then you know, we, I think we should start trying to do a little bit of self-policing, huh? Just at least getting the word out there so that people know not all repair is the same. Every screen doesn't equal every other screen. Because I, I just don't think that saying, we're going to start a certification that says, you know, you got you got to pass a test that, that's, that's really a test called, are you willing to pay for the test? If you're willing to pay $1,000, $2,000 for this shop to get certified, then that tells us that you're not some fly-by-night, low-hanging low fruit. And uh, there's a certain truth to that. Um, but that's really what I think a certification is testing. It's testing, are you willing to pay for a certification? Because all the actual certification itself says is, uh, you know, do you, do you kind of keep things legitimate, clean and tidy and do pre-tests and post-tests and try not to rip people off? Of course, you're going to make mistakes, but do you try? And that's really all you can do with a certification. A certif this guy could be certified, but that doesn't mean that he's not going to do this. I mean, we see that are you know some of the local franchises around here that are certified by whatever sort they do all the certifications doesn't matter they still routinely misdiagnose things and screw stuff up so certification doesn't make you a good technician just makes you a tidy of uh, one that understands the value of uh being tidy all right so now we've we've got everybody as relatively not touching each other as we can on this front now this guy can you move over a little bit without losing your last semblance okay next let's deal with the two guys that are bridged together and i think i need to turn the contrast down on here Somebody doesn't like the Q-tip. Uh, Q-tip's fine. Q-tip is fine. It's a certified Q-tip. Certified by iPad Rehab. All right. So we got to split apart these guys. Most likely, but maybe we don't. Maybe we don't if they're both capacitors and both of those sides that are touching are ground. 
So we don't want to go solving problems that aren't really problems. We only have to split these guys. You see what I'm talking about? This guy's right here that are bridged together. They got to get apart only if they are not both on the same line. So let's see. Let's go check them out. All right, so according to ZXW, these two caps here are ramp ACC, VAR, and our PP three volts in. So those guys cannot be bridged together like they are right now. So let's split them apart. No choice but to split them apart. I'm actually gonna see if I have, I thought there was a new pair of tweezers. There is, ha ha. I'm gonna use the new pairs of tweezers. Let's see. Yeah, those guys, says Reese. What guys? We've d been discussing it since she put it under the scope. Sometimes I miss a little bit with what chat's talking about. All right. By all means, if you see something that maybe I didn't mention, like for example, oh, uh, hey, Jessa, the speaker amp chip right there has got a bite taken out of it. And speak up. Maybe you can see something. That's why live streams are fun. You never know. All right, we're going to just get rid of that capacitor since this is data recovery. And I don't think this is going to be a phone again, although in theory it could. What's under there? Nothing. All right, I do not like to see chips that have a bite taken out of it. But uh, is it worth it to take that off right now? Uh, maybe not. All right, so, so far, as far as I can tell, we have cleared up any bridging. So we've got some open lines and a missing TriStar but we don't have anything that is touching something it shouldn't. Let me look around a little bit further afield and do things like find this guy a... Oh, look, I found one of the missing pads over here. Over here. All the way over there. Let's look around. Is there anything else that would really prevent us from seeing if this board could show an Apple logo. It won't be able to boot, I don't think, without TriStar. Okay, let's see. Let's go to the hand cam then, and we'll use the trust-based DC power supply. If the shop, it's too bad that the shop itself is like a big quarantine zone, and there's more than just me that come here. Otherwise, Quarantine would be a great time to make, to figure out how to get the old tech power to show on screen. But alas, that's, I got bigger fish to fry at home. All right, like being a homeschooler. All right, let's see. Does, here we go. Got one for the iPhone 7. Is there going to be any sign of life? Let's go ahead and stick a screen on it so that you guys can see if it does anything at all. So hopefully, I, you know, although if it really did have anything wrong with it, it would be more likely to be Tigris than TriStar to begin with, but we'll see. More likely than that is that it really didn't have a board repair board issue to begin with, but we'll see. We will see. Okay. Chips with bits out of them. Yes. What if repair schools, repair workshops, and parts tools companies all certified each other somehow? Well, I think that that's a good question, and we've tried that. I was, I put a lot of effort in years ago into iFixit's Master Tech certification, which was meant to be hard. It, it asked things like, 
you know, what does TriStar do? You know, like it, it was meant to really show an understanding of the craft. But it just is, it's hard to make a certification that's valued. And instead, what's the real certification is reviews. You know, everybody's got, every business has Google reviews. And the problem I see is education. That right now, consumers don't know that there are different differences in cell phone repair. All right, so let's see what happens here. So on DC power, I see a pretty normal looking boot up sequence of current consumption. It looks normal, it looks normal. We'll see, maybe it will boot up without TriStar. I honestly have not tested that in a very long time. And we'll see that over time, things that were true on an earlier iOS with a newer iOS, that chip is no longer required. For example, we saw that with all of baseband. In the iPhone 6, you could boot with no baseband. And in the, in the iPhone 6S, it was required. And then later on with iOS 11, it was no longer required. So things do change uh, over time. All right, so this will either boot or not. I think we should just kind of give, give it a chance. Why not? Because I just want to know. Will an iPhone 7 today on whatever iOS that's on, which is probably pretty old because they said it was in a drawer, Will it boot with no TriStar? I don't know. All right, let's see. It's booting, says Ned. We'll see. We'll see. I feel like that'd be really important. Calvin Who predicts that it's going to boot. Now with the iPhone 7, sometimes they have this long you know, boot lag and depending on whether or not, th how long this has been in a drawer, whether it was really like kind of in use as recently as this November, right? It looks like it's not going to boot. This is the same way that our experience has predicted a phone that has no TriStar will behave. Boot loop. It tries to boot, it tries to boot, but TriStar is required. So nope, doesn't boot as expected. So that means... We've got a good chance though, unless there's software corruption, we're on the right track because we've got the phone able to produce an Apple logo with kind of a long boot. So what do we have now? We've got to fix TriStar because we know that it's not going to boot without TriStar. It's going to look exactly like this, a long loop, and then it's going to shut off. But at least we, we have that. When I first looked at this phone, I, before I even took it out of the housing, I checked to see what did it do on DC power and it was just doing, doing like less than, less than 100 milliamps flash, flash, flash. The kind of thing that makes you think a CPU is dead. So we've made some progress. But now we have no choice but to do some work and get a TriStar back on there because this could still be just straight up audio IC where an iPhone 7 that's old enough is you know, going to have that long boot with audio IC. James Haycock gave me a, a 1.99 pounds. Hope you're keeping safe, Jessa. Oh, I am keeping so safe. I barely leave my house. And if I do come to the shop, then I do a stream for you guys. All right, let's do another. I'm kind of curious. Like, I rarely get to do fun stuff anymore. I think that... The TriStar is gonna need to go on, and I think that this one here is, this is the reset, so it's almost certainly gonna need that one. But over here, I wonder if it really requires this pad here. So just to review, what is that missing pad? We could kind of do an experiment just to add to our knowledge, right? This one here that's missing is TriStar to PMU host reset. Reset is, almost certainly going to be required for that chip to function. But this one over here is the UART accessory to AP, accessory to AP UART. Mm, I don't know. I'm, eh, I'm kind of torn. Should we do the experiment or should we just see if we can get a TriStar on here and get it to boot and do an experiment later? Now let's try Let's see how long it takes us to at least fix, fix this other one. All right, so there's no way to get this going again other than putting 
some really tough jumpers on here, right? So let's get busy. How many pads need link wires in total? Just the two. Well, definitely the one and probably the two. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of tin up this via. Make a nice skittle. And let's go on a hunt for some wire. Aha. Found it. All right. Uh-oh, Rob Brown wants to do an experiment. Oh, all right. We'll do the experiment. We'll we'll start with a we will we will sacrifice a tri-star for the good of having a questioning skeptical mind that wants to do experiments. All right, we'll do the experiment. All right, so we're going to start with just doing the one jumper on the reset line, putting on a tri-star and asking is that enough to get it to boot? If not, then we'll have no choice but to take that TriStar off. Hopefully not damage a bunch of these other incredibly weak pads. And then we'll build our second jumper. We'll probably pull off a bunch of pads and then we'll really regret it. And after that, if it still doesn't boot, then we're going to have no choice but to continue to troubleshoot. Which is why botched repair really sucks. All right. So let's see if we can lay a jumper there. Let's make it so that you guys can, can see. Great job twisting your arms, says Travis. Travis of uh, Mask Maker. I saw Travis on the mask, the mask purchase list twice. And I'm pretty sure that Travis supported my sister as a mask maker, which is fantastic because my sister, my sister's husband has MS and it's been a struggle. She is a um, paraprofessional that works with special needs kids and she's really, really good at what she does, but school is all shut down and she has uh, five people to feed. So I appreciate your support. All right, plus she's just the funniest person I know. Really cool person. Okay. Now let's clean up this mess that I made over here. That guy's pretty much off. And disconnect those guys. Okay, now let's see. Is it going to take some green? Travis says, just got them. They are awesome. Well, I'm glad that, that you like them. I will let her know. Okay, let's see. I know that my sister had a bunch of pink fabric, so she had to call up all the people that were on her mask making queue and ask them if they wanted uh, pink masks or if they'd prefer not having pink masks. So she called up one group which was, you know, some of you guys, that was apparently four guys that work in a garage and said, you know, hey, you know, I'm making your masks. Do you care if they're, if they're pink or do you want them to be more masculine colors? And the guy said, yeah, well, we're, you know, four guys that just kind of work here in this mechanic garage. Um, and then he's like, so yeah, you know, masculine colors. And then he said, you know what, I take that back. Send two of them in pink. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. So I think they, they did. It's the coil, Jessa. Oh yes, making making a coil here, which I, I'm actually not making a coil. I'm just making it so I can cut it off. All right, let's see. It's never the coil, except for when it's always the coil. All right, so that's on there. Let's kind of investigate that row is fine. That row is okay. But we will have to put some green on there because that that is not going to be enough to hold that jumper on there when this chip kind of has to dance and settle. 
And by Rob's request, we're going to leave this accessory UART to the CPU line. We're going to leave that open. Stick a TriStar on there and see if it will boot, leaving that line definitely open. Okay. All right, so we've got no choice. Oh, no! I still don't have a UV light here. That's going to that's gonna suck. That is definitely going to suck. Oh, well. Hello from Southwest Louisiana. Hope you guys are staying safe. Your state was on the radar screen of people going out to Mardi Gras. Is Mardi Gras just a New Orleans thing, or is it everybody in the whole state? I don't know. All right. Travis said it didn't matter to him if he got pink masks or not. Way to be a good sport, Travis. All right. Now we're just trying to get a little bit of green on that edge so that that jumper won't come off but we don't want to cover it up entirely because the chip's got to sit there that looks like a little bit more than i'd like to be on there let's kind of move it away a little bit all right fun wearing a mask with eyeglasses if you have glasses which sometimes i wear i wear glasses uh at times then that we have tried all sorts of different variations and different ways and in the end what works is to take a little piece of a t-shirt roll it up and tuck it under there no other the metal hurts your nose you know everything else we've tried you know the best thing is something to just kind of put under there all right i am going to stick this under the uv light and at the same time i'm going to look around to see if i can find the high powered uv light somewhere and let's take a break to Purell your hands. Uh, Purell your hands constantly because alcohol kills everything. You gotta let it dry there. It takes like 30 seconds. All right, I'm gonna look for UV light. Look for UV, maybe Mark has a UV light. I bet he does. back in business and mark back there i didn't think to look back there because i didn't think there was a open charger plug because the usbn usually i plug into the usb charger mark had it plugged into his squid which makes a lot of sense so if you just set your dc power supply on five plug it in here then it should work All right, so let's see if we can get this sped up. Ooh, let's see if we can watch it. Very cool. Do you still need the hand sanitizer since you now have a UV lamp? Well, I don't know if this is UVC or not, Probably not. If I wanted to find out, I could stick it on my arm, see if I got a sunburn. There we go. Very cool trick. We'll unplug this. And don't ever tell Mark that I stole his UV light. All right, now let's go back and look to see if that looks like we could get a chip on there. All right. You do not want to use UVC on skin. Yeah, my, my husband actually has one of the big UV uh, psoriasis lamps. And man, that will tear you up. Okay. Messy, 
but I think TriStar could go on there. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's put a TriStar on there. Let's find one. All right. Let's see. One of these strips is TriStar, not that one. We're going to sacrifice a TriStar to see if this botch job can be made can be made to boot again. Okay, we'll put a little bit of flux on there. And put it on in the right orientation. Okay, this one I'm gonna kind of hold, I'm gonna hold it down a little bit to kind of encourage it to go where I'd like it to go. And once I've got it tacked on, then I'm gonna let it go where it wants to go. And now we're going to let it cool down for just a second and now we're going to ask, can it boot? And if it can't boot, then we're still left with the idea that maybe it actually does require that other missing pad that we intentionally left off to do an experiment. So we'd be forced to take this chip off, make that second jumper, put another TriStar on, and then go on to rule out other things. Why else might it be having this boot loop? Just joining in now. Is that the CPU? Are we reballing? That is not the CPU. This is the TriStar chip on a heavily botched job that has made me throw up a couple of times in my mouth. CPU hopefully is, is okay. Okay, just got a TriStar chip reader. Yes, well, if you got a TriStar chip reader, fantastic. And you wanna change TriStar, also fantastic. Do it on a iCloud lock board that you know works. Do that enough times that you're 100% confident that you can get it off and on and have it work before doing what this guy did and just saying, oh, sure, I'll uh, see what I can do here. Can't make it worse, right? Wrong. Okay. This is cooled down enough so now we can see if, let's see. Let's see now what happens if we ask it to boot now we'll find out it will be my fault says rob brown and my guess is that line is needed well we'll find out i mean it would be worth it if it actually does not boot now and then we go make the second jumper and then it does boot then we learn something and that's always worth it if we learn something, fair enough. The drag is going to be when TriStar was never the problem all along. We're going to do all this work just to get a functioning TriStar back on there and then figure out, you know, that it's software corruption or whatever else. All right, so I've got DC power reset back to 4 volts. And let's see what happens. Let's prompt her to boot. Are you guys trolling on some noobs? This guy better be a noob. What if he's not a noob? What if he's like, oh no, I do transfer all the time. 
All right. Will it boot? Or will it loop? Will it boot? Or will it loop? Another thing that would be cool during quarantine would be to figure out how to use Stream Deck to make cool things, like a, like a meter. Will it boot? Or will it loop? Boot? Or loop? We don't know. This one, if you're just tuning in, is a horrifically botched job uh, from who knows where, somebody in Kentucky just terrorized this board. And we have taken off the disgusting looking TriStar and now we've put one back on with only one of two missing pads replaced because we're asking the question whether or not this particular line is going to be required or not. It looks like it is required because... Oh, wait! Oh, you guys missed it. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> so what, the jumper that we've left off, the jumper that we've left off here is E1, UART accessory to APRXD. I want to make sure that you guys can see that because I'll probably forget and I'll have to come back to this video. Hmm, can you see that? There it is. This one. UART accessory to AP. RxD. So receiving. TX transmit RX receive. This is intentionally left off just to do the experiment suggested by Rob Brown because inquiring minds want to know. And now that we've put a TriStar on, we have interesting. We have a phone that is unresponsive. Wake it up. All right, so just before I clicked over to ZXW, I thought I saw a lock screen. And I did. Boom! Touch! Woo! Holla, holla, holla! All right, so now we know. Rob, you're a hero! You have added to the microsoldering community's knowledge that if you have a horribly ripped up pad, on the UART receiver line under TriStar, even though TriStar itself, we do know and have confirmed is required to boot, that particular line is not. Thanks for a dollar from Kenny Bosick. Appreciate that. And now let's see, let's just see while we're here if we have her right passcode. All right, so it is interesting though, when I disconnect and, and reconnect over here at USB, it doesn't wake up. So, oh yeah, it does. Never mind. Let's see. <laughs> I mean, this, this whole nonsense of like, you know, I'm not gonna tell you what her passcode is, is silly. Yay! Yay! Path to data. Michaela, it's going to be a great news for you, which is always super fun during the pandemic. When you get to make these calls, uh, we'll be able to call her up and tell her that we got all those pictures and we've redeemed the independent repair community, uncertified independent repair community for a win. And I'm going to ask her who that shop was that did this to. And if she tells me, then I'm going to put it in the comments here because I think that we need to do a better job on consumer education, letting people know what, what, what the standards are that we work by doing, you know, keeping it clean in your shop, making things that were in that certification, like your hours on your door should match the website. You're right, they should. You shouldn't have food up front. You're right, you shouldn't. You should do a pre-check on every repair. You're right, you should. All sorts of great things that we should all be doing and, you know, we should all be, be letting people know that there's different screens and there's different batteries and why it is that we use the parts that we do. And when you see something like this, let, let people know. Wall of shame. Yes, let's start a wall of shame. I like that. All right. Please tell me if you found out iPad rehab. What happened? It worked. Of course it worked. All right. Let's see. What do I have to, oh, what if I find out what shop it was? I will. Maybe the RxD is needed to back up the data from the phone. That is a good question and worth figuring out. So let's see. Even though the phone is going to reboot over here, um, it's going to reboot 
when um, it, you know, it's on, it's not on a battery. Ooh, let's see if it can charge. I'm kind of curious now, and then we'll be done with this. Let's see if it can charge a battery with that missing line. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll disconnect from DC power, plug in this, and then let's see. We did it, Reddit. Can a PC detect it? Those are all good questions. See, I love how I love doing live streams. Chats always always add. All right, let's hit, let's do it so we can all learn together. Here we go. Okay, so let's see. With that missing pad, can it charge? Can it be detected by the PC? So we'll plug this in here. All right, and we're gonna plug this in to the phone. I've got a battery on there, probably a dead battery because it's been a while. Now this one, I guess we, we can't really answer that because this could have Tigris damage that, you know, in, prop, in fact, probably does because it couldn't charge when it was back in the drawer, right? And then they put a battery in it, presumably before they did the TriStar job and maybe that battery was dead, I don't know. They probably didn't use DC power, but right now this phone cannot charge. But we don't know whether or not that's a Tigris problem or you know, some, something else, or if that's actually the, the missing TriStar job. So we can't really use that test. But let's do ask if it can be detected by the computer. All right, so let's do this. John James says, good job, Rob. Nice, Rob Brown. But I like chili. Chili cow says maybe the RXD line is needed to actually back up the data. All right, stop trying to, to know this person in Kentucky's passcode. I hear connection. That's interesting. Give me, where's my trust dialogue? Disconnect. Reconnect. Interesting. This is really interesting. It does not appear to be prompting for trust. Have you ever seen that before? I've seen that uh, maybe once or twice. You know, it should be prompting for trust, which is really interesting because it does seem like USB communication is one thing, but actually kind of creating trust and being able to actually talk to a computer. That's a different, that's a different feature of TriStar. Great, Rob. Now we got to go back and do more work. Very cool. Your battery is running low. All right. Well, that is past my bedtime, though. So I'll, I, will, I will let you guys know the verdict on that in the comments. So this needs to be able to, to trust. So... Uh, in order to, to take data off the old fashioned way. However, you know, when you can, you can kind of get a phone to this state, sometimes I like to talk to the customer and see, can I kind of Wi-Fi off the important pictures while I have a path, if it's really important to them. I don't like to kind of go to a phone that I can get the pictures on and mess with it. So I've got a couple of phones that are like that where um, they, there's a problem with USB detection or something, but I can get the picture. So this one we got to boot and it, it appears to not prompt for trust. Let me try this computer though, just to, to be sure. And I'd also want to like proof my cables and stuff like that. Let's see what happens if we go to this other computer, a different, different USB. Rob Brown is just happy to learn something new today. Fantastic. All right. I don't think that computer has enough batteries. Let's try a different port. Very cool. Very, very cool. Because I think that I've had I've heard of a couple of these, and I think I had an iPad long, long ago that would just, you know, not, 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 uh, not prompt you to trust. 
Anybody seen that in chat? All right, so there we go. I will let you guys know whether or not this could still be a tigress problem, um, but it could also be the missing pad under that TriStar. But today, I'm out of time because I was supposed to stop in here and drop stuff off and not do a whole street. Whoops. And I got to go back to safety. But there we go. Botch job is now booting, and we will be able to get our pictures one way or another. So good job, independent repair community. And make sure that you check out store.ipadrehab.com. And if you have a botch job and you're pissed about it, I don't blame you. You know, you are, if you have important pictures that are trapped on a device that some other shop has botched, then you can send it to us, but you'll only qualify for specialty data, which is more expensive because this kind of stuff is a big pain in the patootie. And that's all I got to say about that. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.